The founder and the leader of Zimbabwe's main opposition citizen coalition for change, the Triple C, has resigned. In a lengthy statement released on Thursday, Nelson Chamisa cited a long list of problems, including the ruling ZANU PF's refusal to effect necessary political, constitutional, and electoral reforms. He also mentioned the recall of members of his party from parliament by politician Sigenzo Shabangu, who claims to be the CCC's interim secretary general. Chamisa said he will remain an active public servant and loyal citizen listener. Tendai Ruby Bufana is a Zimbabwe social justice advocate and writer. He tells me that Chamisa should have done a self-assessment of his leadership of the party and taken responsibility for any shortcomings. He produced a, a long, long, long press statement in which he sort of tried to chronicle the events that took place from the time of the elections last year, in which there was a lot of uh, irregularities and uh, a lot of um, violation of the Constitution, things that were also highlighted by SADC and the European Union observer missions that were here in Zimbabwe, such as, you know, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission failing to provide the voters' role, intimidation of voters, as well as, uh, you know, state media, which was biased against uh, the opposition. And then he was saying after the elections, we also saw the emergence of this Sengezo Shabangu, who claims to be the interim secretary general of the Triple C, adding to an already compromised political situation in which elections were rigged. And after rigging the elections, he's alleging that then comes Shabangu. He recalls some of those few MPs from the opposition who had been elected by the people. So he also highlighted those as saying, hey, the party from then onwards was no longer in his hands. And you are saying that the Triple C had effectively been captured or hijacked by ZANU-PF. Okay, but let me ask you, because I interviewed Chamisa yesterday on this program. When I asked him about perceived problems within the Triple C, he seemed to, as you said, to blame the ruling ZANU-PF. We have to accept that uh, the ruling ZANU-PF has been attacking the opposition, any opposition that it has felt threatened by. But Chamisa himself has to be honest. He has to look at himself in the mirror for him to also take responsibility and culpability for the, what has been happening in the opposition in this triple C of late. Remember in our previous interview with you, I did advise that Chamisa, what he needs now to do is immediately go for an elective Congress, get structures, leadership structures in place that are recognized and have a constitution that will be clear guidelines on how his party operates. He has not done that up to today when he's coming out now and announcing that he's leaving the Triple C. Yes, he can announce that he has left the Triple C, he has abandoned the Triple C, he has ditched the Triple C, but effectively, he was no longer in charge of the Triple C. So let me ask you now, he says in his statement that uh, as a patriot, I remain active in public service. What do you suppose he's going to be doing now? Unfortunately, that is a very vague and ambiguous statement. Uh, you know, he's not coming out clearly and saying, is he going to form a new party? What is he going to do? Because that can mean anything. That could mean that he's, he will continue just commenting, you know, on political activities that are happening in Zimbabwe and not being actually actively involved in the politics of the country. That could mean that. So it's quite possible that Chamisa is somehow actually retiring from politics altogether. It's quite possible. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. We don't know. Tendai Ruby Mbofana is a Zimbabwe social justice advocate and a writer. He was speaking with us from the capital, Hurare. The president of Namibia is set to undergo medical treatment in the United States after a medical exam found the possible return of cancerous cells in his body, according to a news release from his office. Vitalio Angula reports from Vinhoek, Namibia. Having previously been diagnosed, treated, and cleared of prostate cancer, Namibian President Hage Genkop has again been diagnosed with the presence of cancerous cells after undergoing routine colonoscopy, gastroscopy, and biopsy procedures earlier this month. 
The CEO of the Cass Association of Namibia, Rolf Hansen, told VOA the president has been open about his cancer diagnosis in the past. He said early detection and treatment played a huge role in Gainkop's past treatment and recovery. The scope that was done indicates that there might be cancerous cells um, in the soft tissue, perhaps the gut, the stomach, something like this. Mm -hmm. But until there is a formal prognosis by a doctor that has been publicly released, it's all speculation. And therefore, we also caution, we say, you know, this is a challenging time. Let us hear what the presidency wants to release. Although President Genkop has been loaded for his transparency in terms of sharing his health status with the Namibian public, Political analyst James Makua says Namibians would like to know more about what this latest diagnosis means. What are the reasons and motives of the president's office sharing a diagnosis which has no prognosis? They are basically putting the country in a state of, uh, of fear, uh, to say the least, because you are telling us the person's diagnosis, but we have no clue what condition is in. How is he doing? What is going to happen to him? We have no clue. According to the media release issued by the presidency, the president accepted an offer from leading scientists and medical professionals in Los Angeles to undergo novel therapy for the cancerous cells. Dr. Elizabeth Kamati lauded Genkop for his openness in a country where cancer is stigmatized and men are known not to take their health seriously until it is too late. So we applaud the president for being very open to us as his subject or his people to inform us that he is sick and so that he can encourage other men who are also going through the same uh, disease of cancer, which is somehow a taboo in our society, to come out and tell them cancer is real and Diagnosed with cancer does not mean a death sentence. The president has come under harsh criticism in the past for seeking medical treatment abroad. However, Namibian doctors acknowledge that cancer treatments are relatively specialized and the country does not have the equipment and medical expertise to treat the disease effectively. Vitalio Angula for VOA News, Wintuk, Namibia. France's Constitutional Council has delivered a blow to President Emmanuel Macron's government by rejecting several measures within a controversial immigration law. Critics urge that the law is inhuman, and the council in its statement deemed 32 out of the law's 86 articles contrary to the constitution. The rejected measures included those making it more challenging for immigrants to reunite with their families in France and limiting their access to social welfare. Additionally, the law aimed to enhance France's ability to deport foreigners considered undesirable. Left-wing opposition MP Eric Quarrell expressed relief stating it's a first victory undoubtedly the first has been avoided. He highlighted the rejection of anti-constitutional and anti-republican articles, particularly those questioning the right of the soil and creating a national preference. Protester Abubeka Dembele acknowledged the anticipated rejection of some articles but emphasized concerns about the law's entirety, rooted in far-right ideas. He stated, Our real problem is the totality of the law because the law is based on far-right ideas, taking all their ideas into consideration. The contentious immigration law had faced criticism for alleged compromising French values and aligning with far-right ideologies. Demonstrations took place outside the Constitutional Council with protesters denouncing the government's alleged concession to Marlene Le Pen's far-right National Rally Party to, rest, to secure the law's passage through Parliament. Sunday's nationwide protest saw approximately 75,000 people voicing their opposition to the legislation, urging Macron not to sign it into law. The rejection of key measures by the Constitutional Council adds 
to the challenges facing Macron's government and underscores the growing influence of far-right sentiment in French politics.